This video is one in a series of videos that cover database topics in three themes. We look at Oracle Apex, Application Express for web applications, relational database concepts for designing and building databases, and SQL, the programming language for working with a relational database. If you want to work with the video series, you can go to this URL to get the scripts and handouts. In this video, I want to talk about the relational database concepts concerning the actual relationships between the tables. We have different types of relationships. We have what is called one-to-many, we have one-to-one, -one, and in the initial design, we often will have in the data model what's called a many-to-many -many relationship. In the actual database, you will never create a many-to-many -many relationship. A many-to-many -many relationship always becomes two or more one-to-many relationships. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to use SQL Developer and import the data model for our database for the animal shelter and look at it that way instead of through the PDF that I've used in the previous two videos. So I've started SQL Developer and I'm going to log in as the animal shelter schema or account. Then I'll go up to File, Data Modeler, Import, Data Dictionary. Then I select my schema. Then I select my schema again and click Next. And then I will check so that I see all the tables that are in our database right now. So now I have the diagram. I'm going to pause the video while I rearrange things. In the actual database, you will not see the many-to-many -many relationship. As I showed at the beginning of the video, if you want to know more about that, look at my database fundamentals series to see how we break down and create two or more one-to-many relationships for a many-to-many -many relationship in the data model. I'm going to talk about two relationships. I'm going to talk about the one between animals and transactions and the one between persons and employees. But what I say would apply to all these relationships, which you will be able to look at in detail if you want to. So what I have is a one-to-many. This indicates the many relationship. Any one animal, Fido, a dog that came in last week could have many transactions. That means that that one dog could have one, two, zero, or six records over here in the transaction table. In a one-to-many relationship, the primary key from the one side is always a foreign key field in the many side. It is always on the many side, no exceptions. So we see animal ID here. In fact, if we double click on the relationship, we have information about the relationship. What we see is that the referenced column is animal underscore ID. The primary key and foreign key happen to have the same name. That's not always the case. In fact, I guess I'll show you one other relationship to illustrate this. So in the animals table, we're looking at animal ID. In the transaction table, we're looking at animal ID. This field refers back to this field in the animals table. If I were to look at, for example, purse ID and client ID, the names are not the same. But what we see is client ID in the transaction table refers, references, purse ID in the person table. So we get that detailed information on the relationship. But it's important to recognize that you can take one record here and relate it to zero to many records in the related table. The other relationship I want to look at here is one that should become a one-to-one -one relationship. That's a situation where the record over here for Sue Lynn Moore, for example, has one and only one record over here as employee. She won't have multiple employee records, but right now it's set up so that there actually could be more than one employee record for Sue Lynn Moore. 
So I'm going to, and I hope this isn't too confusing, I'm actually going to go modify the database itself. I could change this diagrammatically here so that it looks like a one-to-one -one relationship, but it wouldn't change anything in the database. And I could also do it using SQL Developer, but I'm going to log into Apex as one of the developers, and I'm going to use the object browser feature that we've learned a little bit about. So let's switch over to that. I need to log back in. I'll get logged in. I'm going to go to SQL Workshop, Object Browser, and I'm going to go to Employees. Right now, the way the relationship is shown in SQL Developer, just pop back here, it looks like any one person could have multiple employee records. What I need to do is take this foreign key and set a uniqueness constraint so that the purse ID from here can only appear once in one record over here. So I'll do that here. I'm going to add a constraint on the employee table. Constraints are rules. Remember that the database environment keeps rule books about each table, and a constraint would be one of the rules that it would check whenever you try to do something with that table. So I want to create a constraint, and I'm going to change this name. I'm going to call this UNQ underscore employee purse ID. And this type of constraint it'll, will be a uniqueness constraint. And then I select which column I want to set that constraint on, and it will be purse ID. Then I click Next, and then I click Finish. This is much easier to do, by the way, when you have no data in the tables. If there are any data in the table that already break this rule, you won't be able to create this till you correct the data. So how do we know that this made a change? I'm going to come back to SQL Developer, and I'm going to shut this down and re-import the data model. Select the user account, the schema, and the tables are still selected since I've already imported. Because I'm in the same session where I imported before, I'm going to get this pop-up. What I need to do is say I want to merge, but indicate what I want to merge. So I want to merge the employee and persons table. All the others have, haven't changed, so we can leave them as they were. So I'm going to merge that. And now what I see is I have a one-to-one -one relationship. I no longer see the what we call the crow's feet, which indicates a mini relationship. So we changed the actual data table, re-imported the model, and we see that impact here. This will prevent us from having an employee record more than once for the same person record in this table.